Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our very special guest and my friend, John Picklick. John was Shumka's artistic director from 1982 to 1996. He joined the company in 1976 and following periods of study in New York and Ukraine with the famed Virsky Dance Academy, he returned to Canada to become Shumka's third artistic director. A man with a vision and an intrinsic understanding of dance, John became the captain at the helm of one of the largest and most diverse dance companies ever to tour across Canada and abroad. Under his guidance, the company made a historic tour to Ukraine and pushed the boundaries of Ukrainian dance by creating a unique hybrid of folk dance, ballet, character, and modern dance. A strong believer in the universality of the human spirit, John Picklick endeavors to create dance that transcends all boundaries and ultimately touches the soul. Respectful of the time-honored traditions of Ukrainian folklore and customs, he believes that Ukrainian dance must also evolve, reflecting the sensitivities of the performers and their audience. John, welcome to the Zabava program. Really nice to be here, Stephen. Thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome. And, John, I've been talking to the Zabava listeners for probably the last two, three months letting them know that you're in the studio. You're a very busy man, and we all appreciate you taking some time out of that busy schedule to come see us. So we've got a grand performance coming up on April 9th and 10th at the Northern Alberta Jubilee Auditorium, Pathways to Kobzad. Now, the audience, I know they're at the edges of their seats already, and they're wondering what this is all about. So we're going to get into the interview, and I'm going to ask you right now, what was your inspiration for Kobzad? And kind of a two-pronged question, Why a focus now on Shevchenko? Well, that's a really good question. Um, Taras Shevchenko, one of the greatest visionaries of the world. We're proud that uh, he's all Ukrainian. He has taken upon himself for centuries to inspire anyone that had the courage to really dig down deep and try to understand his message. It's a universal theme. It, It isn't only necessary that Ukrainians focus on his text and his legacy of his work. And uh, 200 uh, anniversary, uh, the 200th anniversary celebration, I think, happened in 2014. And in doing so, Shumka wanted to do their part to pay tribute to such a great visionary, to such a great man, in in the way that we know, in in the artistic language of dance, the power of dance. Mm -hmm. So Kobzar became our mission. It's interesting that the legacy of his work is called Kobzar in his text. And uh, we took that as a, as an inspiration to name the show what, you know, the, the very same name. Now going forward, that's when the process began. Great inspiration. How does it apply to the stage? How do we find those, those nuggets that would do two things, pay tribute and homage to such a great legacy, as well as foster the evolution of Ukrainian Canadian dance here in Edmonton and bring those two worlds together. And that's what you'll hopefully see on April 9th and 10th. Well, I know I don't have to hope. I know I am going to see that. Is the story of Shevchenko's life then, John? We chose a different path. If one reads about Shevchenko's life, there are many reoccurring themes. The man had a hard life, a very, you know, at a time, Ukraine that during his lifetime had its challenges, like just like they like have today. challenges today. Mm-hmm. Serfdom, there was occupations, there was all sorts of wonderful achievements, patriotic battles, uh, you know, all the elements that we kind of take for granted, but describe the legacy of our of our people and our heritage in in the history. So, yes, his life was full of these colorful, you know, you could do a show just of his life. Yes. But we chose a different path. We chose what are some of the reoccurring themes in his focus, the way he viewed life. And and we we took that inspiration, looked at his text, his poetic genius and came up with four pillars that would allow us to communicate some of those time-honored and universal themes on stage and they became destiny they became soul they became courage and they became hope and within those four pillars i think we do pay homage to a man that addressed those 
ideas and, and, and heartfelt mandates in his work and also in his poetry and also in his visual arts and also in his inspiration for others to take away something from that work. Yeah, beautiful. Now, you've mentioned the themes, destiny, soul, courage, and hope. Are those themes, are they relevant just to Ukrainian people? I really believe they're relevant to any type of universal spirit. I mean, look at the world and the complex world we live in today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Syrian crisis, there's, there's, there's issues all around us here in Canada. There's all sorts of struggles with First Nations and in, in, in trying to find their place in, in society and how we're all part of that struggle. Mm -hmm. So these these are universal themes, and they don't go away. They rise to the top, and they and they settle down. We find solutions, and they're always constant. In Ukraine today, look what's happening. The words of of his work are motivating people to take up a position and take up a will and a faith, a vida, so to speak, that will change the course of history. Mm -hmm. And we in Canada here need to do our part. I'd like to think that Shumka's job now is to enable some of the, you know, to, to bring to the forefront some of these issues that affect us on a more universal scale as citizenship, as Canadian citizens, as how do we feel, how do we, we, we call ourselves a very, say, multicultural society. Yes. Well, in order for a multicultural society to live together, we need to understand each other. And this work brings to the forefront the journey, the struggle of the Ukrainian people, and in, in such a way that other cultures can find the analogies and bring it closer to home for them as well. That's very nice. Now, what are some of the new creative angles you are working on with uh, with Kobzada, John? Well, what's really important, I mean, Shumka has a history of, of dance theater. Dance theater is an exciting way to present dance. I've dedicated most of my life to that mandate and that passion. It's an ability for us to use all the tools of that stage, of all that theatrical presentation, the lighting, the music, to bring together some sort of feeling that can give the audience context to understand what they're seeing and, and also just to kind of give you a, a sense of overall beauty and passion and, and vitality of the work that, that is being created by these talented dancers. This show, more than ever, we've taken a bold step, kind of piggybacked on some of the previous efforts in some of our work, but this is dedicated to a complete video projection support of the stage that mm -hmm. is fluid, that is ongoing, unlike in days gone by where you would paint a beautiful backdrop and drop it in and dance in front of it. This work actually moves with the dancer. It's alive. The dancer needs to react with some of it. In the first scene, it's all about destiny. And that destiny is the Milky Way. For millennia, human spirit has always looked to the heavens to see a glimpse of themselves. Well, that, that we're going to try to create on stage. Try to find that struggle and support it by every technical means of the, of the theater that we can. Excellent. Okay, now where has the music come from for the production? The music, I'm very pleased to to say. I feel it's it's one of the greatest works of our friend Yuri Shevchenko. Quite appropriate that his name matches the name that we're paying homage to. Yes. Um, Yuri has been with uh, Shumka for many years, and um, but this work he feels very, and I'm speaking on his behalf, he feels very personal about in Ukraine today. Everyone is trying to do something to help the cause. Yuri is a genius when it comes to composition. And for him to create this powerful score that can summarize the feelings of Canadian culture, of Ukraine culture, of the human spirit culture through music... Is it's just wonderful, and and we're so proud of this score. We feel it can stand its own, regardless of cultural connotations. It is based on four themes: Dume Moi Dume, Cherry Tree of Vesnya, Raveta Stokni, which mm -hmm. is that great, mighty, powerful world on the Dnipro, yes. and Takayi Dolya, which is a fate. You know, so all this music comes together based on these pillars of thought, and it becomes a beautiful, fluid thread that binds all the emotions of that journey of the Kobzar. 
Fantastic. Now, I understand that the choreography and movement of the piece is a blend of people from both Ukraine and here in Edmonton. Now, exactly who has brought the piece to life through movement? Oh, that has been a real collaboration. Uh, we have really chose to, in terms of the choreography for this piece, there are very many different specific needs to address in the work. By introducing certain characters, for instance, the Chodnakmara, which are figures of oppression. Mm -hmm. It's difficult that every, every emotion needs a certain lexicon in dance movement to bring that emotion to life. Ukrainian dance is very powerful in its Ukrainian lexicon, but it needs an amalgamation of other genres to bring home that emotion. So there are people here in Canada, uh, like Stephanie Lilly, that has a great uh, background in modern dance. Mm -hmm. uh, Viktor Litvinov from Kiev Opera, National Opera of Ukraine. He's been the lead choreographer that has been able to bring the poetry of the movement through a classical and theatrical presentation. I myself have often, you know, I, I love rolling up my sleeves and giving my <laughs> my input. Uh, Tasha Orisiuk, wonderfully uh, you trained classical and Ukrainian blend dancer that together we, we search for that movement. Yes. Um, so it's been a real kind of collaboration. That's the word I'm looking for. Collaboration of, of talent, vision, and dedication to find those nuggets, to polish them and say the right thing for the benefit of that audience and in benefit of paying tribute to Shevchenko. Nice. And you mentioned Chodnachmara. Now, what were the challenges in the costuming of the work? Chodnachmara has been uh, a real journey, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because obviously they are meant to represent all the ills and, and woes that have plagued Ukraine's mm -hmm. history. Everything from occupation to serfdom to downright oppression. Oppression. In order to personify that, the image my mom my mother always used to say, you know what the, the storm that's brewing in the future, that Chornakmata is gonna roll in. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it just stuck with me. It just wanted to be so yes, obviously Chorne, there's a lot of that, you know, personification in the costumes, very non committal to male female. And the movement itself is is also very internal, organic. And in doing so, it offers a wonderful contrast to the diversity of the beauty of the classical Ukrainian dance movement. They serve a very, like any dance theater piece, you need that catalyst. You need that dramatic element that can move the story, that forces people and performers and audience participants to make a judgment, to make a stand, to have an opinion on what they're seeing and what, how does it affect them. So Chodna Khmada, I applaud their efforts. It's been a real search, and I'm really proud of the achievements that they're making. Excellent. Now, Kobzad is one half of the show being presented on the 9th and 10th of April. What is the other half? Well, we returned to one of uh, Shumka's classics, and, and it was intentional, the Traveling Chumake. Like the Kobzad, prior to the written word, a lot of the cultural's relevancy of their folk tales and their their history, they were communicated through the Kobzar. He was like the caretaker of that history. The traveling Chumakib would take also some of that news of the land, so to speak. They were the newspaper of the times. Wow. They would travel throughout that vast country talking about the feelings of what's happening in that part of the country and this part of the country. So it just seemed appropriate. Both of them used to watch the you know the Milky Way, the Chumatsky Shlach. Mm -hmm. You know, it's even in their the way they name the heavens, you know, so it just seemed right. Having said that, Traveling Chumakia, for those of you that remember, is a light-hearted human spirit story about, you know, uh, a young orphan, a young lad that wants to belong to the greater Narod. And Kobzad is all about the Narod, the, the people searching for their own destiny as a nation, as a people, as a culture. So there's some ties. Excellent. Okay, now Shumka has worked with a lot of contemporary themes and movement recently. How is this piece different, John? You know, I, I've been around a long time. I really am proud of this piece because for me it's very personal. Some of my own first memories as a young child were reciting that 
poetry of Taras Shevchenko's at the Ridna Shkola concert or whatever the case is. And it's taken the, the anniversary of Shumka to go through 55 years of, of searching for a, a formula to make this all work. We've done all sorts of themes in the past. This one here is, I think, the most Ukrainian piece we've done in regards to its inspiration, its message, and its potential to share with the audience, the universal audience, what is important to us as a culture. How does a culture define its own identity? How does it find the courage to stand up and believe in who they are? You know, those are really, really important and, and strategic mandates for our group mm -hmm. in, in, in the history and the time of, of our current status. I, I'd like to think that Shumka plays a part, just like those Kobzari, to bring to life some of these stories of the people and the wishes and hopes and put them on the stage mm -hmm. in a way that will pay homage, as I say, to the man and also pay tribute to the efforts of those so many Ukrainian dance companies across this country, the choirs, the, the musicians, all these people that have picked up a Ukrainian torch and said, look, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to contribute to society in the only way I know how, with passion and love. And that's what we all do. And, and I'm, I'd like this to represent our own personal efforts. And I hope it's shared in that spirit with all the others that attend. John, I want to thank you for coming in today. I, I was excited before. I'm even more excited now. I can barely wait until April 9th and 10th rolls around. I know the company and yourself uh, specifically. You've put in a lot of work into this. And you and I go back a few years. And for, <laughs> for the listeners that don't know, uh, John was uh, the gentleman that was responsible for bringing me into three Canadian tours back in 1982, 84, and 87. And I actually had everything processed to, to go to Ukraine in 1990. And I got hired on with the Edmonton Police Service, and I had to make a decision in that. But I'll tell you what, if you're still looking for a Cymbala player here for the 9th or 10th, you can slide me in with the traveling Chuma <laughs> Hey, I bet you like riding a bike, I bet. <laughs> John, is there anything you want to wrap up and saying here to the audience tonight? Uh, all I can say is uh, thank you for supporting uh, Shumka for these many years. It's it's very encouraging and, and important to our dancers. This is a way of saying thank you to you and contributing back to this city that has supported us. So come, have a good time, dig deep, see what's important to you, and let's share it together. Thank you, John, and all the best. God's blessings to uh, yourself and to the Shumka dancers on their performances coming up here on April 9th and 10th and into the future. Thank you.